welcome everyone. Welcome Open Arms. We are so glad to have you in our house church, from our house church to yours. Welcome. Let's get ready to worship the Lord together. Jump in the chat, greet each other, say hello, and let's get ready to praise the Lord. Oh, victory, you have won. Victoria. Stolen, you brought back to us. Let's sing that again. Oh, victory, you have won. Victorious, you have come. What was stolen, you brought back to us. i 
right where you're at in your house, worshiping with your headphones or with your TV, with your family. I want you to lift up your hands and I want you to pray to Him. I want you to call on that name because this is what I know. I know that no storm, no virus, no economic hardship is something that God is unfamiliar with or something that God doesn't know how to help us through. God is on the throne and his promises are still good and his promises are still true. And right now we can call on him and we can trust him. And so right now in hundreds, thousands of places all over this country actually, you are worshiping with us. You are saying Jesus. And there is power in that name.
worship you. We don't need a building. We don't need all of us in one place. We can be all of us all over. You call us to gather in your name and that you're there in our midst, which means that your presence is spread all over right now. So I pray that your presence would bleed out into our neighbors' homes, that our community would see who you are through this time. God, you are good. We worship and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, we're going to continue on with our service, so here we go. Welcome. Rags to Riches Part 6, welcome to my living room. So it was it was great to worship with you a little bit ago and and now to to get to have our house church um, be greeting your house church in your living room. Um, things are very different last week to this week and, and that almost feels like um, the way that things have been going. The the world is just shifting and shifting and every week is looks a little bit different than the last and um, and it may feel like that, like, like we're on shifting sand and there's no safety net that, um, but, but to know that our solid ground is found in Christ, our, our safety is in, in his word and in the principles of his word. And one of those principles is giving and honoring him with our wealth. And we were going to be digging into that anyway, at the end of the series, um, a while ago, when these messages were planned, we were going to be wrapping up with how giving brings abundance into our lives. And um, and I can see that God wants to use that now more than ever. Um, that it is, uh, God knew what we needed, of course. So um, so let's go ahead and, and dig into that today. Um, giving uh, the first 10% of our income, that's called a tithe. And, um, and it's a principle that giving him our first fruits everything that we have is his and it's that 10 percent that we're just returning that back to him and honoring him putting him first in our finances and tithing isn't being generous okay it's just being obedient it's just um him allowing us to steward the other 90 percent and our obedience is is returning that to him so it's when we decide to give over and above the tithe, that's where generosity, true generosity comes into play here. Um, so since we've got married, um, we, we had decided to tithe. We knew that it was a principle that, that bring blessing into our lives and, um, and it did. There were many, many times that, that we would give and we could not explain what God did in our lives and how he provided in our, our provided for our needs and sometimes it made no logical sense for us to give with what we had or, or with our income the way that it was but we decided to trust God anyway and to to give anyway and every single time he showed up he provided he met every need that we had and sometimes to the very penny of what we needed and it shouldn't have surprised us but many times it did um, we lived this way for many years it, it was a blessing to us, to our kids as well, to see his faithful hand, his sometimes creative ways um, that he would meet our needs and provide for us. Um, sometimes it would be someone sending venison uh, to fill our freezer when we had run out of meat and things to eat. Um, and we've lived on a lot of venison and it's a blessing. Um, or maybe it was a job that uh, Josh didn't expect to get as a freelancer. Um, but just all the time, his faithful hand, providing for us, making a way when we didn't see a way. Um, we would help people when, when they need a hand or um, uh, reach out and, and try to bless when we could and share what we did have. But we never really felt like we could be that true, generous um, 
people who, who would just bless over and above. We wanted to, um, but the numbers were not adding up. We would count ourselves out as tr being able to be true givers, the, the generous ones that are able to give over and above. Um, but there would be times that, that God would nudge our hearts that um, to bless someone need, in need or, um, or to, to respond to an offering. The Great Commission Project was one of those times where um, about a year and a half ago, our church uh, decided to, to start uh, sending out books by mail to um, people um, of stories of, and testimonies of people in our church that um, their lives were radically changed and transformed by Jesus. And they would be sent um, all over the region and we we really felt led to be sponsors of the project but we had to to really ask ourselves this is another bill basically like are we ready to make that commitment and that's that we knew that it would be a sacrifice and um, but we knew that that we wanted to be a part of that that god wanted us to step out in faith and be a part of that um and god used it to this day we've had about twelve thousand books that have gone out to the region and m that many people have heard the truth of Jesus and what he's done in in so many lives just even in our midst it's just it's so powerful to even think that we had a, a tiny part in that and that God used that um, also there was another time that uh, we had a Freedom Sunday offering and this was when we had an opportunity to give to uh, human trafficking and the set free movement and I uh, was not prepared um, for, for giving an offering and, and hadn't planned on anything and, and just um, felt the Lord nudging that I needed to step out and, and give uh, to this offering extra. And um, at the time, I had $20 in my purse and that was supposed to get me to payday. That was gas money, groceries, anything. Um, and, but I knew that the Lord was just saying, give it all. Just give it all. Bless, uh, bless me. I want to use this. And, um, and I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if we would have enough gas or groceries, but I knew that, that I had a choice to obey and, uh, and to be used to bless. And, and so I did, I gave that and, um, but I still knew we had needs and, and it was much more than $20 could meet. And I, and I just prayed, God, you know, our needs, you know, our bills, you know, how much we're short. And, and I'm just asking you to provide, Lord, um, I trust you. I trust you to meet our needs. And by the end of the week, we had a check in the mail that was to the penny of what we were short in our bills. And and there we have so many stories like that, time after time, where God would just supernaturally provide. And and trust me, this is not not humble brag of, of you know, us talking about, you know, me being this great philanthropist because these are small sacrifices. Um, they, they were huge sacrifices for us, but you know, we're, you know, we weren't humongous givers. Um, but God knew that it was going to take that step of obedience, no matter how big or small, he knew that it was a sacrifice and a choice for us to choose to obey him and to partner with him, uh, in being generous in his work. And, um, and he, he honored, he blessed us every single time. And we were starting to learn to, to start to trust him more. Every time you would think we would stop questioning, we would stop doubting every single time he would meet our needs and we would see it. And there'd be another time that we would be hurting and, and it, would, it would be hard uh, to not doubt, but he kept stretching us and nudging us and push, pushing us out of our comfort zone. Um, wanting him to trust him more and more. It took us so long to realize that, um, to give, that the faith to give, even when it hurts and um, when it doesn't make sense, when things don't add up physically, um, but that's the nature of obedience, giving when it doesn't make, make sense fully to us. Um, it's modeled in a conversation with Jesus that, that Jesus had with a man who really wanted to be good. And I know I can relate. Um, Matthew 19, starting in verse 16, someone came to Jesus with this question, teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? So I know what this felt like. So what are the rules, Jesus, right? So we'll continue in, in verse 17. Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, 
There's only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. And Jesus replied, you must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not falsely testify. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. I've obeyed all these commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So the young man went away sad. And no wonder, because he, he wanted to obey. He wanted to do what was right. He wanted to follow the Lord. And he wanted to follow the rules. He wanted to be right. But why wasn't he still blessed? Why didn't he get the answer that he was looking for in Jesus? And then it goes on in, in verse 25, the disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Then Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you. What will we get? Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne, you who have been my followers will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be least important then. And those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. And I understand the disciples too. When we were struggling, still it was difficult to not get frustrated in the midst of the struggle. God, we're serving you. I would, I would ask him, you know, we're giving. Why are we not seeing the abundance that, that is coming from, from the giving? And, you know, don't you know what we've given up for you to follow you? But in the end, it was we we or i i you know we had a blessed life we were very grateful but we were still preoccupied with our money it was what we didn't have the lack in what we needed okay what was our focus on our focus was it on god's abundance his ability to meet our needs and how he always has or on our lack and frustration so it's not saying, this passage is not saying that being rich is evil or that it will prevent us from getting into heaven. You know, the, the young man was, was looking to do the right thing and to get into heaven. But if our money owns us, if our heart, our mindset, our focus, everything within us, okay, is, is it turned towards our money, towards our, our abundance or lack, or is it becoming our God? No matter how little or how much we have, um, it becomes your God when you focus on it. When all of your mind is set on it, all of your, your intention, your heart is set on your little or your much. Could you walk away from it if he told you to? Could, could Jesus have your whole heart? Do you, would you follow him if he said, go or is your money calling the shots at the end of the day do our possessions do our things or the lack thereof have us in a stranglehold so is your money owning you or does it serve you money is a tool it does serve us not, it's not the other way around we are its master if our master is christ we serve him only and he knew that the disciples left everything to follow him. He recognized that. He was pointing out that not everyone is going to do that. It's going to be very difficult for people to do that. He was acknowledging that. So do we choose to follow him as our master? He said it this way in Luke chapter 16, starting with verse 9. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you into an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, 
you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and be enslaved to money. So God expects us to give it all. Not just our $20 tip or not even just our 10%, which is a lot. All of us, all of it, everything. Because it's not about the money and it's not about the church wanting your money. Jesus wants all of us because he gave it all. He gave everything. He gave his son to die for us. He gave his life for us. Why would he expect any less of us when we choose to follow him? He wants our whole lives, our whole heart, everything surrendered to him. And he has a right to be jealous. If he sees that something has got our focus and it's something as destructive as obsession and, and worry over money and possessions, if, if he sees that that is taking his rightful place in our hearts, he has a right to be jealous over that and, and to want that back. Our heart, our focus, our, our everything is to serve him. It's his. He bought it with his blood. So this also isn't just with our money. It's with our time as well. Our resources. We talked about this last week. What are we doing with what we've been entrusted with? When we are faithful with the little, we will be entrusted with more. And when we're faithful with much, we'll be entrusted with even more so. So does that mean that I'm asking you to give up everything and become homeless? No, because you gave it all away, no. Then we'd just be in need and needing from others as well. No, we are responsible to be stewards. We are responsible to be faithful with what he's given us, to care for our family, pay for our bills, and, and to, to steward, to, to use our resources wisely for our family, for others, and for the kingdom. But in evaluating where our money is going is our focus to bless. So are we, you know, whether it's we're blessing the needs of our household or others or the ministry, is our focus on blessing or to increase? Are we increasing our wealth, our wants, our value? Where's our focus lying today? On blessing or just growing larger and increasing? This quote from Stephen King I found interesting. Yes, it's the Stephen King you may be thinking of. <laughs> I think it sums this all up very well. One thing you're not going to do with it is take it with you. And he's speaking of our wealth. When you come in naked and we come in naked and broke, and we're going out broke. Should you give away what you have? Of course you should. I want you to consider making your lives one long gift to others, and why not? All the other stuff you have is just on loan. All that lasts in this world is what you pass on. The rest is smoke and mirrors. Giving isn't about the receiver or the gift, but the giver. Giving is a way of taking the focus off the money we make and putting it back where it belongs on the lives we lead the families we raise, and the communities that nurture us. So I ask you to begin the next great phase of your life by giving and to continue as you begin. I think you'll find that in the end you get far more than you ever had or do more good than you've ever dreamed. So if Stephen King isn't even a follower of Christ, he gets it. So we can't keep it. We, we can't take it with us. We are more blessed when we give, when we give it away. In 1 John 3, chapter 3, verse 17, it says, If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother, and, brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? So John here is going as far to say that he wonders if the person who is ignoring a need can even have the love of God in them. So that's pretty harsh. <laughs> but it, it's true that if 
if we don't let them know us as Christians by our love, by our compassion, our caring, our sacrifice, then what are we showing? So I'll ask you, who can you bless today? If you truly seek God on this, if you truly ask him, Lord, just show me, open my eyes and show me someone that, that I can bless today. He will show you a need or more than one need um, that you have the ability to meet. And if all that we have is his, that we, he has an abundant supply at that. What does he want to do with his money today? That's what we ask him. Lord, what is it that you want me to do with your money today? Who do you want me to bless through obedience and listening to your voice? Because if he puts it on your heart one time to do something, to, to go bless someone, and you don't act on it, there's no guarantee that he will ask you again. So will you be sensitive to his voice today, to listen and respond, to act upon what he's asking you to do today? Because when you're obedient once, when you're faithful in the little things, he will give you many more opportunities to serve him and bless others. Henry Nowen says, when we refrain from giving with a scarcity mentality, the little we have will become less. When we give generously with an abundance mentality, what we give away will multiply. So that seems to not make sense that when we give away that we will actually have more, but it's true. That, that God uses what we're giving away to abundantly bless not only others, but ourselves. And let's not make a big deal about it. Listen to this warning from Jesus in Matthew chapter six, verse one, watch out, don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they'll ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. So it's not about our performance or recognition here because that makes it about us. It's about being the light of Christ to others and shining his light in, in a really dark time and an opportunity to be used by him to bless many. In Luke chapter 21, it says, When Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than the rest of them. For though they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, as poor as she is, has given everything she has. So our tithing, our our offerings to the Lord that's an act of worship but we're I'm encouraging you to not let it stop there it's about giving our all to Christ the widow she just had two pennies and it seems like such a small offering but it was everything she gave Jesus her all she gave God her all and it didn't go unnoticed Jesus saw it pointed it out and he knew the great sacrifice that it was for her and he declared that it was the greatest sacrifice. He saw her heart and her trust in him. So I know that there's, there's uncertainty in these times right now. Many have, have lost their jobs and, and it is uncertain times that we're living in, but it doesn't go unnoticed by God. He is certain that he is faithful and he will meet every need that you have when you ask him He's not going to, to not provide for your needs. He's not going to, to not see you through. He's faithful. He knows. And he wants to use us today. So let's commit to make a choice with this act of worship. Because giving is our act of worship. To worship him with what we've been given. Giving is not an expectation not an expectation from us, not an expectation even from God. It's an invitation for us to join him in his work. He's inviting us. He's asking us, don't you want a part of this? Don't you want a part of the abundance that I want to bring not only into your life, life but in the lives of many around you? So let's, let's 
prepared to pray for our offering and, and below you will see um, a slide that shows you other ways to give um, to us um, through you know online giving and, and through our app as well but I encourage you over and above let's just abundantly bless today there are so many charities as well locally even um, destinations bright alternatives the friendship table are, are just a few just a few that that we can continue um, to not let our giving stop at the church where where we know in obedience we we will give and and we will bless the Lord's work in our midst in open arms and and see many people reached with with his truth and in outreach and and things that that meet their needs but there are many other ways that we can continue to be generous over and above so I encourage you to to reach out and support these ministries as well and many are, are going through a hard time in this season and and they still want to be able to meet and bless many that have needs during this time as well so I encourage you to be generous so let's pray and bless this offering today father we just thank you so much for the ability that we have the invitation that you give us to join you in your work with our our wealth with our resources lord you have chosen to entrust us with them to so that we may steward them and just just bring blessing and return for your kingdom so lord i pray that that we would abundantly give back to you what belongs to you but lord also that we would just generously over and above just so many many seeds of blessing in the lives of others in our community those who may be hurting other charities and people who who are trying to help and and just need more resources lord if you're nudging our hearts today to do that and, and bless others lord i pray that in every way we would follow you and answer that call to be obedient we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, welcome back for some worship as we close out. How awesome is it that we can hear that message about giving and what it means to give and to be generous and how that's really at the core of what it means to be a Christian. I'm excited about what it means for us, for what it means for you, that we can experience that joy and that power of uh, giving back to God. So let's do more of that. Let's give him back our praises. Let's uh, tell him how we think of him, that we love him. Let's do that together.
says that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord, and that means you are with us today. You are with us in every home. Lord, you are with us here. And we just celebrate your presence and we worship you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. So thank you so much for joining us this morning from our home to yours. We hope that it was just such a blessing to you to worship with us. We know that it was a blessing for us today. And um, just a couple reminders below is a link for our connection card. So please fill one of those out so we can follow up with you about your experience today. Also, if you're using our app um, to follow up with a prayer request or put, put your prayer request in the chat, we would really love to know how we can be praying for you this week and any needs that you may have. Please let us know. And, um, and also, there's an opportunity for you to sign up for devotionals. So if you uh, want some a little bit extra encouragement in this season, uh, though, there's a link in the chat. You can click to sign up to receive some devotionals from our staff in your email. Um, just, just some encouragement for this season. So we are just so grateful to have you with us this week. Please, next week, join us. Easter, it's going to be so exciting to be able to celebrate together the resurrection of our Lord with you in your house churches. So please share and invite your friends and family. Um, have those watch parties and comment. Connect with your friends this week. Think of a few um, family or friends or even people that you might not even know very well um, to reach out to and just encourage them. Check on them. See how they're doing this week. And uh, we're in this together. We know that God's got us and he's going to see us through this time until we are back together again. So thank you and have a great week.